All okay. right, so Ready? Wolf B. I, let me see. I think I have one or two more clickbaits. Oh, yeah, just a reminder okay. of this. I'll add to the collage a little bit more here. After your session, we'll take a quick vote and um, and we'll we'll guess on on what the best votes were and uh, we'll give away another Amazon gift card. So with that, I'll now hand off to you if I can figure out where to unshare or feel free to just take it over. So I have to say my uh, while I do that, uh, a few weeks ago, my dad's like, hey, I watched the video you were on. My dad has no idea what I do, like no <laughs> idea whatsoever. Does and anybody he's like, honest, but go I, ahead. well, yeah, outside of what we do. And he's like, were you wearing a onesie? <laughs> and that's an awkward conversation to have with your father. He's like, uh, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, sorry. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Again. Uh, my name is Brian Dam. Again, I'm a software engineer at Recat Software. Uh, I've been blogging at damgoodadmin.com for a while. Um, software updates are sort of my stick. Uh, I love them. Uh, I don't know why. They were kind of a first love uh, when I was at a small, I started off at a very small shop, like 150-ish people. And and we uh, you know set up WSOS for the first time. And then I was like, oh, this is awesome. Like this, like the, the raw power was just, just made me full on drunk. And I've just gone down the road ever since. And so, um, uh, I, you know, not even two weeks ago, I think Greg reached out. He's like, hey, would you be willing to talk about Windows Update for Business? I'm like, sure. What, what, what about Windows? He's like, well, all of it. And I was like, 60 minutes? Are you, you crazy, man? <laughs> but I've never been one to, to, to not take a challenge. Uh, so we're going to try and do it. Uh, it is going to be kamikaze, full on gonzo. Um, and I'll probably talk fast. Uh, to get through it all, but that's high roll. Uh, totally come on. Can they come off mute? I don't know if they can come off mute and yell at me, Should but uh, if they need to come off and yell at me, um, I probably won't follow the chat. So Greg, if you like, if there's a great question, go ahead and, and yell at me and then I'll, I'll look at the chat and we'll, we'll, we'll go along. We'll so, okay. So this is the agenda. What are we going to talk about? Windows update for business. That's it. That's it. We're not going to talk about anything that's not related to windows update for business. Uh, so what is it? What is what this update for business? Like, you know, really what it is. And uh, man, when it, when it first got talked about or released, um, and it was released in with the first release, I think Windows 10, uh, 15, 11, or at least the full first GA one. I remember my my uh, my supervisor at the time, my boss, and he, came, he he went to Ignite. They didn't certainly didn't send me to Ignite, but he went to Ignite and he was all excited. He's like, oh, there's this new thing called Windows Update for Business. And, and as a you know, WSUS nerd at the time was like, oh, that's, that's great. Let's this is great. WSUS really needs to be replaced. And and then I was like, oh, <laughs> it was kind of a letdown. It's like, oh, oh, these they just made a name for new group policy settings. Like it's it's really it is like Windows Update for Business. It's not a product, right? It's an evolution of I would say the Windows Update agent, which maybe is a bit of a misnomer. Um, but the point is, like it, at the time, it definitely boiled down to. Just some additional settings, right? Uh, you can you can specifically that you could uh, defer feature updates versus uh, quality updates and some other things. But it, it you know it was it was this kind of to me it was a much ado about nothing. It was like oh again you just gave a name to some some additional group policy options. Um, over time though, like you know how you, you know ultimately again this is a Windows 10 you know window uh, Wolfie is a Windows 10 feature, it's an OS feature. It's not a config manager feature. It's not a group policy feature. It's not an Intune feature. It's none of those things. It it lies with the OS, right? The OS has these settings it recognizes, and if you set them, it does certain things, right? Like that. that that's what it is. And so um, over time, uh, config manager uh, started supporting uh, with the settings. Although I, I wouldn't recommend using it. Um, they're just way behind. I actually have a user voice out there right now that kind of says, "Hey." If you're going to keep with B settings in Config Manager, you'd need to update them or just get rid of them because they're just out of date. Um, you can configure it with group policy. I'm not going to really talk about uh, doing with with group policy just because visually it, that's just horrible to look at. Like just to to I don't really want to spend. I don't think it's visually interesting uh, to spend our whole time in the group policy editor. Uh, and you can do it with Intune, which is the way I'm going to demo it. Um, in part again for for visual sake, but also because as a, a MVP, I'm contractually obligated to say in tune no less than five times a day. Um, but I, like I want to stress, like 
you can use either of these things, right? There's different ways to configure uh, Wolfby if you want to do it with registry settings. I guess that's that's conceivable too, because it, it, it all flows down. That's the way it flows down a hill. Um, so I don't care how you do it. Um, and, and all of the things we're going to talk about today are totally doable in any of those technologies. So with that, I'm gonna we're gonna jump right over into my Intune 10. All right, so here's devicemanagement.portal.azure.com. And let's just dive into it. You're going to go to devices and you're going to go to update rings. And um, so these Windows 10 update rings, these used to be for both quality and feature updates. We'll talk about why I say it used to be. I wouldn't use them that way. But the idea is, is in if, when we were rolling out, when, when all of us were initially rolling out Windows 10, Microsoft kept hammering the idea of rings, right? Like, hey, you're going to create, uh, you're going to create these rollouts, and you're going to automate them, right? So we can release Windows 10 feature update whenever we want, and then there's this automatic, you know, kind of fade to point, point put in place. Um, and so the idea is that you would obviously you would create multiple rings, right? You would throw something out to your developers first, and then maybe into IT or you know whatever your strategy is. You the idea is you would have multiple multiple rings. Let's go ahead and create one or at least pretend to create one. And here, I want to, we're going to kind of go through this in a slightly weird, um, slightly weird manner, because I'm not going to go top to bottom because it, it, I thought a lot about this. It's, it's not the best way to talk about it. Um, but these are your settings, right? The top to bottom, these are basically the settings you have within Intune. And again, there's a there's a bunch more in group policy, but a lot of them are deprecated and it's, it's the inner relations when you, when you look at group policy, are, are really hard to suss out. Um, so I'm, you know, all everything I'm showing you here has group policy equivalents, um, but it would take like some real legitimate searching and uh, to figure out exactly which one ties to what and which one breaks another one. Um, it's it, it's it's not great. And if we have time, I'll, I'll I'll give you some good news on that front. But let's start with the top one. Uh, the most one of the most important things you're going to change is like or, or configure is which you know which which channel of uh, the operating system we're dealing with 99.9% .9 of all of your things are going to be semi-annual channel. Um, uh, semi-annual uh, semi channel targeted is dead to us. Um, you have, and then you have also have insider, you have fast, low, and the the preview. Or I think this is yeah, the uh, release preview. So again, very simple. You're going to choose what you want there. Um, and then what you're going to do is is you have some other options here. You have uh, this is about what we're actually deploying, right? So we're deploying semi-annual channel updates. And do you want other products, right? So here we're really talking about just Windows operating system updates, right? That's the real focus, right? We're talking about feature updates and your monthly quality updates. But there are there are products, Microsoft products outside of just the OS that you might care about. Right? You might care about .NET and um, Physio and all these other things. <sighs> Physio, is that in Office? Non-Office things. Because it specifically is not for Office 365. If you have Office MSI installed still, um, yes, that would fall under here. But Windows Update for Business does not manage Office 365. Uh, sorry, Microsoft 365 now. I can never keep up. But let's just say Office 365. Um, it just specifically does not manage that. Uh, Office 365, I don't want to go down too much of a rabbit hole. Uh, but man, that's the that's the black sheep of of up patching for sure they went and rolled their own so but that's what this is talking about right so I, the default here is allow and I, I i don't see why you would change that uh windows drivers okay um we'll talk about that later um normally hey the defaults allowed it's probably a good idea right uh, dealing with drivers and config manager is a huge pain in the butt this is nice um there's a reason uh, when we get to the end you might actually consider going here and blocking it and then we get to our our deferral days right again these are all concepts you, you you've all seen and read about that this is nothing groundbreaking uh you know how long do you want to defer your quality updates versus your feature updates what i would say is always remember that this is from the release period right which normally is going to be patch tuesday but as i once said patch tuesday is kind of a lie like there are other releases and we actually had one very recently um uh, the out of band, the out of band patch for Print Nightmare. Uh, so there are other, 
releases that can happen. They're not frequent. Usually, usually it's Patch Tuesday. You can kind of rely on that, uh, but it's not. So, but like, but that's not a rule, right? There are other releases that can happen. So just understand that that this isn't like Config Manager where you might say, hey, we're going to install everything on this, everything for this month and that day, at the same time. Uh, the moment something releases uh, from, uh, you know, Microsoft releases something, these deferral days start ticking off. Uh, and so you're going to set those to whatever whatever you need for your particular ring, right? So your your um, your developer and IT devices, right? Your early piloting, you might put a zero or maybe a one or two here to to see if it's really really bad, right? To go into Reddit and check the patch Tuesday super threats. Uh, uh, feature update. We'll talk about uh, this later, but I would recommend for now you, you should set this to zero, and I'll explain why later. Um, and then you can set when for those feature updates, how long do you have to uninstall them, right? So if you need to roll back, how long do you have to do that? Um, now what I want to do is actually jump down to something that's sort of newish, and that's at the bottom. That's these um, deadline settings. So this changed in the last year or two, I think. They, there used to be uh, earlier releases, 1709, I want to say, um, relied on what they called engaged restart. And the idea was that there would be this sort of process of getting the user involved in, in selecting when it's going to reboot. And then there was some sort of wishy-washy. Um, eventually, we kind of force it. But you really had to parse out like exactly when and how that was all going to happen. And so they ripped that out, and they put in real deadlines. And, and this is deadlines in the way that a config manager admin would think about deadlines. This is, you know, if, if you put deadline for feature updates and we say, you know, two here, I mean, two days after it's released from Microsoft, this will force it to install. Right. So I probably wouldn't put two here. Um, um, but you, you have to think through these of this isn't again, this isn't when it's going to be offered to the user, right? This isn't in config manager available time. This is very specifically when are we going to force an install and grace period, I think is slightly a bit of a misnomer because you're going to think that grace period is sort of like within config manager. It's like, oh, well, you know, we, we will somebody comes back and they get the policy and, and you know, they're behind it and therefore they're going to be able to to do this. But this is this is the number of days that they have post install to reboot, right? So um, if you're not going to force it, uh, yeah, you're not going to force a reboot Im immediately after install, you're going to give the user some time to do it. But, you know, at some point you need to force an actual an actual reboot. And so that's what your grace period is going to do. And then this last setting here, which is auto reboot before deadline. Um, I, yeah. Uh, I'm forgetting some of my slides that I, I have in my memory, which is um, the idea is, is the goal for Windows Update for Business is to really sort of prompt and engage the user. I know I, I know I said engage just a minute ago, but like is to get the user involved in setting that reboot if at all possible, um, or if not, like do it when they're not using the computer. And so there's actually this concept of automatic maintenance. And again, that's a that's a that's a Windows task scheduler concept, which is, hey, this machine is is following you, right? Every step you take, every breath you take, like this machine's watching you, um, and so it knows, like when you're not using it, and you know it, it has actual historical patterns of like, well, you know, you, you seem to leave the computer at this time of day, those kinds of things. Like there's there is some some machine learning that can go on there to figure out, hey, you don't use the computer at this time, so that would be an automatic. That's the automatic maintenance window put window, they don't call it, they call it automatic maintenance. But if you think about an automatic maintenance window, it's like this is a time when the computer says, hey, the user's not using it, it's, uh, it's powered in, sorry, it's plugged in, I mean, um, and the, it's idle. And so why don't we go do this, right? So while, while the user is not looking, let's go ahead and, and reboot that. And that's what this setting does. This says, hey, if, we, if we, we're gonna install it on this deadline, we're gonna give them this grace period before we force the reboot. But if we opportunistically can do it during the, that automatic maintenance time, let's go ahead and do that. If for some reason you absolutely need the user to be sort of involved, right? You, like you, you, sorry. If you do that, like users are gonna come back to like a machine that's rebooted, right? And they've tried their best to like open up your apps and all that stuff back, but like you're gonna know. 
Like you, you're going to know that your your machine got rebooted when you walked away. Uh, and if that's a problem for you, if if you need your users uh, to be, you know, until the very end of the grace period, you need them to be actively involved in that reboot, uh, then you want to hit no here. So again, these are deadlines and deadlines are the reason I'm talking about them first is because they essentially, in many ways, they supersede or override everything that happens above here when we talk about user experience, right? We can do whatever we want up here. Um, we can set whatever whatever settings we want, but if we have deadlines enabled, that's it, right? Like this is uh, this this deadline for feature updates. If you set it to two, it's going to be two days. Um, it's going to be two days after. Um, and I actually need to stop presenting because there's. Not not presenting. Sorry, I need to look at my slide deck because there, there's a, these actually work differently. These deadlines work differently for um, for feature updates than they do quality updates. And I just need to re where is this? where'd you put this? Yeah, okay. So the deadline for feature updates is um, calculated from the pending reboot, right? So above we had our deferral, right, for feature updates, or well, we'll talk about, and you should set that to zero, but you're, you're at some point, this feature update's going to get offered to the device. Um, and then it, that's when our deadline starts, right? So deadline is um, plus two, let's say we set two days for a feature updates, so it'd be two days plus the grace period, but it's from the pending reboot. Right, so it's going to wait for that feature update to come down based on the deferral. It's going to wait for that feature update to get installed. And once it's installed and waiting for that pending reboot, that's when the deadline and the grace period start calculating from. As we're quality updates, they will start from when it's offered. Right, so the deadline, the deadline, so if we set two here, it's going to be, well, we offered it on this day, and then two days later, we're going to force the install. And then the grace period is from that pending reboot, right? So again, feature updates, the best way to think about this feature updates start from the start from the pending reboot and quality updates start from when it was offered. Um, and there's reasons they did it that way that I don't fully understand. I think it makes it more complicated than it needs to be. And I think their plan is to eventually fix that, but that, that they do work slightly different for those reasons, for some reasons. So I want to, talk now go up back up here we're going to talk about the user experience options right and we're going to go down each of these so the first one is notified to download um, this is purely user driven right the idea is that you're going to not automatically install anything you're just going to tell the user you need to install updates now normally i would tell you well that's the, that's a one-way ticket to no patch town right like you're you're not patching at that point but you can combine this with deadlines, right? So you you could conceivably pick this and then use the, well, we're going to set a deadline, so we will eventually force it. Don't do that, though. Uh, there's a better setting, and it's the last one I'm going to talk about. There's a better way to do that. If, if you want your users involved, right, you want to notify them and get them involved in setting those, those updates, but then eventually force it anyways, yeah, that's what notify download does, but it does it in a less less good way. So don't don't pick that option. Uh, the next one is going to be to automatically install a particular maintenance time. And this is what I was talking about with the automatic maintenance time, right? There's this, there is this idea of the device knows best, right? It knows when you're not, when you go to the bathroom. <laughs> and so it's going to wait to go to the bathroom and then, like, oh, great. They're not using it. Let me go ahead and, and install and uh, uh, auto install. Uh, but in this case, uh, in, in this case, it's just installing. It's not the reboot, right? So it's going to automatically try to uh, opportunistically install during that automatic maintenance window. And it's going to sit there and prompt the user for seven days, right? Hey, you need to restart. You need to restart. Um, and if it gets to that point without a restart, it won't force the restart uh, within these active hours. Uh, and so active hours, again, this is like on the config managers, I think uh, business hours, right? So this is the idea here is that this should in business hours in Config Manager, it, the idea is that's a very specifically a user uh, concept, right? Like uh, the Config Manager, the product team specifically pushes it back against the idea of, of admins specifying what the business hours are. And this works the same way. The idea is, hey, you can specify certain a certain time frame during which you do not want to impact the user. Um, the slightly unfortunate part about this setting is that 
this does force it, right? This doesn't let the user set it, right? And so if you're doing auto install at maintenance time, then you're, you are deciding what time they work. And that used to be okay, like, you know, people were a nine to five shop, but like now that everyone works from home and works crazy hours, like it's a uh, slight hubris to think that you know exactly what their active hours are. So for that reason, uh, I would actually suggest not using this if you can avoid it. Um, the next one here is auto restart, uh, sorry, auto install and restart at maintenance time. It's the same thing we just talked about. Uh, the only difference is that reboot behavior, right? So before, without the, the restart at maintenance time, we would try and prompt them for seven days and then before we start forcing a reboot. In this case, it's just, it's gonna opportunistically try and install and reboot when you're not looking. Uh, and again, uh, active hours apply uh, to this scenario as well. Um, the next one is auto install and restart at a scheduled time. Now this one for a, a while, really, it was like, okay, like this is very config manery, manery, config managery, uh, which is like, hey, uh, I, again, going to above when I was talking about how there could be multiple releases, right? So, and so you could have multiple installs and multiple reboots throughout the month. And, and so I looked at this option, I was like, okay, this feels, this feels natural to me. This feels like, a setting Brian would use and and you know we'd come in here and we'd said okay well you know let's oh yeah we should do it like the second week of the month and we should do it on Tuesday right like it not you know what's 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 the 8 p.m whatever it is and there's reasons this is a bad idea too probably should do like the third week of the month because this time zones and all poor Australia and New Zealand um but it's like like this is what in my mind makes sense, right? Like, hey, once a month, I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and force this. And there's two problems, there's two huge problems with this. Uh, one is, this isn't a deadline, right? I looked at this and, my, and where I went wrong is I looked at this and thought, oh, this is a deadline, right? Like, hey, we're gonna make sure we run this install. And so if the machine isn't on, right? If I don't run at this time, obviously when it starts up, it's, it's just gonna go ahead and, and do that schedule, right? Uh, wrong, no, that's that's not true at all. If this schedule is missed for whatever reason, it's just not going to patch that patch in that cycle, right? So if you're doing it once a month, right? If you're only if this cycle is once a month, and that machine is powered off at that time, well, you're just going to skip a month. Like it's not going to retry. If you combine this with deadlines, it could be even worse because your deadlines don't care about the user experience, right? So if you say, hey, we're going to we're going to we're going to if you said this, right, third week of the month. Uh, third Tuesday of the month at 8 p.m. we're going to do it. And you come down here and you set a, a deadline of, well, it's, it's going to be three days. Well, what's going to happen is um, it's just going to get this deadline will trump what comes up above, right? It's it's not going, it's never almost never going to install on this time. It's the deadline is shorter than um, the time to when you said uh, do the schedule install. So again, I look at this option and when I first looked at it, it was like, oh, this is what I would do. And this is clearly what, what most orgs will do, and, and that's a bad idea. Don't do it. Fight me if you want to, but you shouldn't. Speaking of bad ideas, <laughs> oh boy, I don't even know what this scenario, well, I guess like kiosks, right? Kiosks, I guess, would be the one. So this this does exactly what what we've been talking about. Like it's, This does exactly what it says, uh, what you think it would do. It's gonna try and find, again, that automatic maintenance window it's going to try and find that time when nobody's using this box uh and it's going to reboot it and it's just not going to prompt you it's just gonna it's just gonna go yolo it and um when you want to like it just happens again i don't really see this being used a lot other than maybe outside of some kiosk stuff now believe it or not reset to default is actually the best setting which makes no sense right like it's the it, this is the most obtuse name in the world um, but this is actually what Microsoft and, and, and looking into it, I would also recommend. If you're gonna come in here, I would recommend setting this to reset default. And what that means is use the default UI experience of the operating system. Uh, as of October, 2018, uh, there was an update. Uh, so everything backboarded at all. Um, what this basically means is that we're going to automatically try to install and reboot during automatic maintenance and we're going to do it outside of user definable active hours and it's that user definable active hours that's important because all these other things we talked about uh where we had those active hours we're specifying that and once we specify that that means the as i understand it 
The user can't specify it, right? That's an admin setting. And so if we come in and hear what we're basically saying is, let's be opportunist, opportunistic about when we're going to install it. We're still going to wait the deferral periods. We're still going to have deadlines that force the install at some point, right? Those things are still in play. But, be, but between those things, between deferrals, between the deadlines, we're just going to try to install and reboot whenever we can. Outside of when the user tells us, don't mess with my machine, right? And so that to me is like the, the chef's kiss kind of thing like that's that that's what i want right i want my users i want to give them time to do the right thing and i want them to be as engaged as they're willing to be i know many of them are just going to not care and ignore it that's fine that's what the deadline is for right but but people that care and and yeah what what has what happens is a small number of people get angry about it rebooting and sometimes you lose those arguments but other times you're like well just do it yourself next time right like you you had this this thing available to you for seven days you had many many uh reminders and prompts and things uh why didn't you use them and i know i know i've i've made that argument i've lost um uh, but i continually try and push that uh that block up the hill uh so let's talk about the the remainder bit of settings here um restart checks uh when we talk about automatically checking it, it it's saying well if the battery's low, if the user's there, if that just, I don't know what display need, needed means, but if they're in presentation mode, if they're in full screen, if something's full screen, right? They're watching YouTube. Um, phone call state, right? I guess if they're in, in a VoIP call or if they're playing a game, right? Like let's not reboot during those things, right? Um, and so that will, I mean, uh, 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 in addition to everything we've talked about, it'll make sure that, well, okay, if these things are true, let's make sure that we, we don't actually reboot it. Uh, you can skip it, right? You can You can force it if you want to. The next two ones are somewhat yeah, contentious, I guess. Um, option to, well, not the first one, option to pause Windows updates, right? So um, are you going to allow the user the ability to pause the updates, right? So you release an update and that you can notice and they're like, mm, nope, I don't want that for a little while. They can go into the UI and they can say, hey, I'm going to pause these updates. And so this is allowing them or disallowing, disallowing them to do that. The next one is, um the more conditions right option to check for windows updates right do we allow them to go into windows update and you know go to and you know do we allow them to go do these things or do we grade all this out um oh man i should hit download but i'm not going to um you know do we allow them to do these things um or not and and Historically, there's been reasons to do this. Um, specifically, there's uh, there there was an option to download, you know, check against the internet, right? Within Config Manager, you'd have this option there that says, I, I don't want to just scan against Config Manager. I actually want to scan against the internet. And then this was a, a primary way that a bunch of stuff happened. You would have managers who would get random stuff installed that didn't go through the QA process. They'd have optional updates. Worst case scenarios, they'd have uh, FUs that would come up, right? You, you, you'd get FU'd. Um, and you're like, well, how? You know, it's because, you know, they could go click on that. I am told up and down, uh, uh, the product team swears up and down that uh, within Windows Update for Business, this will not happen. That if you are in that UI, where, where it went, where did, where did it, now whatever. If you're in that UI, the only stuff that will ever show in there is the stuff that you've allowed, that you've approved through Windows Update for Business. That's it. Um, and so they would argue, don't do this. Uh, certainly, if you pick the option I told you not to pick anyways, because nobody listens to me and you shouldn't listen to me, but if, if you pick notify download, don't don't hide, don't hide this. <laughs> you're, you're literally hiding the only notifications that will have the user, let the user go do it. So do not, <laughs> You know, do not do this. This is this is pure insanity. Um, probably, if anyone on the product team is listening, or uh, make sure that's not possible. Like, yeah, you should not let that happen. But you can do it. But don't. Um, so this user uh, approval to dismiss restart notification. This this again. This is uh, when we talk about notifications coming up. You know, are you going to force the? Is it just going to sit there until the user interacts with it, right? Or is it going to kind of automatically dismiss? Um, these next two, I'm actually not going to talk about because they're going away. At least uh, that's what I was told. These will uh, die very quickly um, because these reminder, these are reminder settings. Which, if, again, if you're in config manager world, 
this is kind of familiar to you. Um, but which is like, hey, when it's when it's waiting for reboot, let's let's have some let's be able to control how often we uh, notify users. But you should be using deadline settings. And when you're using deadline settings, uh, these two for sure uh, don't have are not have no impact, right? They are they are useless. And so either they are going to remove them entirely, or they should be hidden from the UI when you when you enable deadlines. Um, so that is everything I have about rings. If anyone has any, well, one last thing I'll talk about, but then if anyone has questions about any of that, uh, let me quick, let me quick look at chat or somebody can yell at me and say, oh, that's the wrong window. Where's chat? Over there. I see we're all doing the poll. Oh uh, yeah, I would love to be able to enforce a reboot. Unfortunately, yeah, rebooting is patching. Uh, I hear what you're saying. I know the fight. I know I've lost that fight. Uh, I get it. I know where I know where you're coming from, Jason. Um, but I, I will tell you, just not forcing a reboot is is just to say not patching. It's it's those are the same words. I'm sorry. <laughs> you, you probably already know that. But um, the last thing I'll say about rings here, something that uh, is really cool, is uh, sure you can pause a feature in quality, and you could do that. You can't do that in config man. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, you could do that in config manager, and you could do it in group policy. But what's really interesting, what config manager does not have, is uninstall, right? So let's say you are rolling out that feature update, and it's not going well for you, or the quality update. You know, let's say a bunch of printers just stopped working for some reason, no reason, and you need to stop it. Great, you stopped it, but you're like, oh, we get, we really got to roll that back. You can actually do that. I don't, you know, I generally don't recommend doing that, but if you need to, this is the only, only place I know of that allows you to actually uninstall this. So any questions about rings before, again, I'm going to move on to some really cool stuff, stuff that really has me all shades of, of excited. Because like up to this point, like this is all good stuff, right? Like um, I like Windows Update for business. Uh, I'm, I'm a huge fan. Um, there's some good, there's some bad, there's ugly, right? Like the good, hey, all the internet clients, you know, all clients are internet clients. Like, it doesn't matter where they are. Like you don't need to worry about CMG and and uh, you don't need to worry about boundaries and any of stuff. Like uh, if they have a connection to the internet, you're good. You can uninstall updates. It's super actively developed, right? Like when I talked, you know, when I talked about early on uh, when it was first released, like oh that that's yeah that wasn't much, but like it it is getting crazy developed, and I'm going to show you in a, in a few minutes like how crazily so. Um, there's some increasingly better scheduling and reboot options, right? Like this is, I would argue, the user experience here is legitimately better than what Config Manager gives you. Um, and the other part of it, it's it's the built-in. Yeah, so this is the next line, right? This relies on the built-in OS features, right? And which again, I would argue, are better than Config Manager UI elements. But importantly, it's the ones that your users know, right? They're like, well, they all have home machines, and so they know what these things look like. And that kind of allows you to sort of be like, well, it's Microsoft doing it. It's not me. And it's not Config Manager. Don't blame Config Manager. That's that's the OS. I don't I don't know. Microsoft did that. You know, throw Microsoft under the bus. It's hard to do that when it's like, oh, everyone can recognize, well, that's that's something that you control, right? Uh, the UI that you're going they're going to get in Windows Update for Business looks like the UI that they get at home. And so it it, it you know, they'll still complain, but you know, it's one less reason they should have. Oh, what's the bad? Well, all clients are internet clients, right? Like both good and bad. Uh, you know, there is uh, delivery optimization. There is stuff you can do to try and uh, lower the impact. But if you have like remote offices with no or really crappy internet link and, and you know, there's no, there is uh, Microsoft connected cache, right? This is the better together. If you have a config manager, sure, you can throw something out there. But if you don't have a config manager, you can't. Uh, they keep promising uh, Microsoft connected cache as a separate thing, but uh, they keep not delivering it. Um, and so, yeah, if you have complex, uh, content distribution requirements, um, there's some stuff you can do again with delivery optimization, but it's not pretty. It's not great. Uh, it's not a great story. Uh, no update selection. You know, again, years ago, I would say that's horrible, but like today, it's like, well, what, you know, get over it, uh, especially when we talk about, uh, um, well, the next point, right? Like there's no server OS support, right? So we're just talking Windows 10 devices. And at this point, there's not a lot of update selection in the first place. Like you should let go. Like, uh, there's just there's there's no reason to have update selection, um, but okay sure. Uh, the ugly right there's no there's no reporting built into Windows Update for Business. Uh, it, again, it's a client feature. I'm kind of lying to you. We'll talk about it in a second. But like 
It's a client feature. There's no reporting built into it. There's update compliance, part of, I think, Windows and Linux. Uh, they can't kill that because it's kind of the only solution. It's not great. Uh, not a big fan. Uh, they need to fix this. Uh, but yeah, there's no built-in reporting for Windows Update for Business. There might be other solutions, both within, in Microsoft, so on and so forth. But Windows Update for Business, that has no built-in reporting. And there's no third-party updates, right? Like, uh, you know, your Patch My PC isn't going to kind of work in Windows Update for Business. They're, they're going to have to integrate with, uh, well, they do, with Intune, right? So, but there's all the stuff you don't have to care about, right? Like, I don't care about catalog and my maintenance. Yeah, like, I don't, I don't even maintain W. So, someone needs to decline or expire or delete, or I don't need to do any of that. When Microsoft goes completely and utterly off the freaking rails and supersedes their own prerequisite, that's not a problem for you, right? Because you're never going to decline that, right? You don't do catalog maintenance. And so, even though they're, they're doing the stupidest thing ever, it's not a problem for you. Like, the May uh, cumulative update will should always be there. It will always be in the Windows Update service. Um, yes, it might be superseded a thousand times, but it'll still be offered. And if you need it, it'll install. And when, it's in when that's installed, then you'll get the latest Cumulative Update. They still need to fix it. If anyone's on Microsoft on this call, please, please fix that. Uh, but there's no tweaking. Let's move on. Uh, there's no tweaking IS, right? Like, uh, you know, I have to say, every config manager admin is a IIS website admin, right? Like, no, not here, right? You don't care about that. No content replication, which is a pro and con, but like, hey, I came from a place with 260 plus DPs. Horrible, terrible. You don't want to be in that place. Trust me. Like, this is rough. Uh, DPs, I don't know why they don't, they are not as reliable as you would want them to be at scale. 10, 15, fine, whatever, I can live with it. But when you get into hundreds, like, uh, you know, I pour one out for the people that have thousands of those things. Uh, again, don't need to worry about VPN or CMG. Like, none of that stuff matters. It's all internet all the time. Um, let's. Yeah, wrong window. So let's get into some really interesting stuff. And why did I title this the, the way I had? Up to this point, we've talked about some interesting things. Like, I, like it's a solid. It's a solid offering. I, I, I wouldn't complain about anything that that uh, I've shown you so far. I, and I think even that you might consider. Hey, yeah, yeah, that, that's really that's that's actually worth considering as a you know a wolf. Uh, sorry, window a WSOS competitor. But it gets so much better. So. Uh, like a year and a half ago, they released something called Feature Update Deployment. Yeah, they called it FUD. Can you imagine that for your uncertainty, doubt? Yeah, they called it FUD. That's great. I love it. Great work, guys. Um, here's a licensing and, and the Windows thing. So, hey, yeah, if you, you need to be E3 or above or the education equivalent or prison premium, you, yeah, you need to be pro or better. Um, but what it allows you to do, this is a huge hurdle for me. It's a huge hurdle, I think, for people adopting Windows Update for Business, which is, well, I, I need better control over my feature updates, right, my FUs. I don't. I, I want to do the fall release. I don't want to do the, the spring release. Uh, I want to skip it. It's like, well, that's not a thing, right? That's not all you have is deferrals. You can just say how long you wait until you install it. You, you have to install it. Uh, and that's what FUD fixes, right? So it allows you to pick a specific release uh, of Windows 10, you can assign that to an Azure AD group, uh, and then that move that group will move to that release, whatever you just said it was, and it's going to stay there forever. It's just never going to move. And let me show you that ever so briefly. Oh, wrong one. Uh, where? Oh, did I close that down? No, I didn't. Great. Um, so you can go into Windows 10 feature update. It's still in preview. I don't really know why. Um, it's been in preview for a very long time. But again, you go ahead and test this. This is like the easiest, this is it. Like this is it. You just come in and you pick your version of, of uh, Windows 10. I expect 21 H2 will show up here, uh, quote unquote, real soon. You pick your version, you uh, select what group you want it to be assigned to, and that's it. You click next, click create, and then basically what's going to happen is the next time these things change in, the check in, they're going to make sure that they're around 20, you know, 20 H2 or better. Like they're just, they're, they're, uh, they're going to go do it. Uh, and, and to use FUD, you need to set your uh, feature update deferrals to zero. So uh, 30 minutes ago when I was talking about that, that's why you set that to zero because you shouldn't be using, I don't think you should be using deferrals for rolling out your feature updates, you should use this. I will say though, like this is a very manually kind of thing, right? Like you have to, you know, if you're doing your um, piloting and all that stuff, like this is a very, the moment you set this is the moment 
within minutes, all these devices, the next time they check in, this is going to be offered to them, right? So, um, and so there's no, what I'd love to see here is like a more phased approach. Like, hey, I'm going to roll out 20H2. And on this day, I want to roll it out to this. And then this other date, I want to roll it out to that. And then, you know, I'd like to see that kind of thing. You, you can't schedule this ahead of time, uh, which is kind of unfortunate. I think I would love to see that, that uh, would love to see that remedy. Um, so let's feature update, super easy. But here's here's my question, right? So this is where I got all shades of excited about this. How, how does this work, right? Because when I first tried it in private preview, it didn't. Uh, I had it 1803 and there was some bug and, and it was like, oh, wait a minute, this is this doesn't work. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll, I'm a config manager. I'm in, I, I know what to do. I read logs, like this is my job, it's my life. I, I read logs all day. And so I dug into the logs. I'm like, there's gotta be somewhere, there's gotta be a client setting. You know, obviously what's happening here is we're setting a policy to Intune and that gets downloaded by the client and the client says, oh, I, I update to this version. Okay, that's great, I'll, I'll, I'll go do that, right? I'll control the Windows Update agent to make sure that that's the only feature update. Uh, and I dug and dug and dug and was like, that's ah, not anywhere. Like, and I talked to the team and they kind of like shifty died. And they're like, yeah, no, it's not on the machine. It's not how it works. And I went down a rabbit hole, but I don't want to talk about that yet. We'll talk about the rabbit hole later. Now, a few months ago, they came out with yet another awesome Windows update for business feature, deploying firmware updates and, dri uh, and drivers. Uh, currently in private preview, um, I'm actually going to show you, unfortunately, I'm not going to demo this for you because A, I'm not cool enough to be in the private preview yet. In reality, I, I forgot to say that. But also, unrelated, uh, the private preview right now really actually isn't where you'd want it to be. Um, the UI isn't right there. But what does this allow you to do? Um, it allows you to create policies that are going to go out and detect uh, what drivers and firmware updates are available, report it back to you, and then you can deploy them in uh, various manners, right? So you can create this policy to either automatically or manually deploy updates. You assign it to an Azure AD group. Um, and then if you need to, if you set manual deployment, you go ahead and, re and uh, re review and approve those discovered updates, right? So let's look at what that looks like again. Sorry for the, sorry for the non-demo demo. Uh, but this is what you do, right? You would go create this update policy and you're gonna pick one of two things, right? I'm, on, I'm either gonna automatically just deploy all of these things, all of these driver updates after some deferral period, or I'm gonna just deploy updates that I approve, right? And then you have an option there to say, hey, when we find a new, when you find a new one, Go ahead and let me know. Now, you might say, well, why would I do the first one, right? Like that doesn't make much sense. I could already do that in Windows Update for Business, essentially. Uh, well, this might be great for your piloting group, right? Like you, you might say, hey, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna go ahead and do this automatically, but I'm gonna do this on a small group of machines. Um, and that's, again, that's that's a policy for those machines, but then I'll have a, 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 pol a manual policy for everything else that says, hey, okay, yeah, let's, 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 Let's deploy that to everything, and then I'll get that information back, and then I can say, hey, well, yeah, our, our automatic deployments went well. Let's go ahead and, and, and deploy that singular update. And that's what this looks like, right? So this is a this is the result of a manual policy. Um, and so we deploy, they deployed it out there, and you waited some time, and all those devices got that policy to, again, this is a manual deployment, and they started reporting back, like, here's all the updates uh here's the the drivers or uh, bios that were needed on these devices and you can you can see very specific useful information you know driver name version date manufacturer what kind of class it is uh, but these last three are the important right is it approved or not um is it how many devices it apply to and and how many devices have it installed right this is a like when i think about windows update for business and i was complaining just a minute ago about like reporting like this is awesome. Like this is great stuff. Um, so let's say, okay, great. So you do that, and you're like, yeah, we we we've uh, we want to go ahead and install this this. Come on, there we go. We want to install this one. We want to approve this. So you go ahead and select here. In this case, we selected display link, and we say, hey, let's go ahead and approve it and deploy it. And again, look at this. It's a date. It's a date. An actual, real, legitimate, honest to goodness date. We're going to say deploy this thing on this date, not a deferral period, not right now, but like, holy crap, that's a real date. Now, let's say you did that and it didn't go well. <laughs> Just like feature updates, you're like, oh, well, I, uh, we deployed that, but that wasn't a great idea. Uh, we need to really stop that right now. Well, you can, you go ahead, you've approved it, you click on your approved uh, thing, display link, and you say, hey, we approved it on this date, it was deployed on this date, we have it installed on this many devices, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and suspend it. Or we're gonna be like, oh, let's go ahead and stop that. 
Um, so it's very, very easy to do, very, very quick. Um, and then if you realize later, oh yeah, no, that was okay, you can actually go back in and, and reapprove it. So that was BIOS and firmware. But I ask you again, like think about the stuff we just saw. How? How is that working? Right? Like what black magic allowed us to like pick dates and and pick what updates very like think of the finite granularity we were just talking about like this one update we're going to deploy at this specific time like how is that getting down to the client what kind of like you know if i were to build that like it'd be this crazy policy i'd basically be reinventing the config manager wheel right like hey let's create this policy let's create a bunch of xml let's put it put it down and let's you know let's control the the windows update agent and we'll go do it and it's like well, you know okay sure 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 maybe but that's not how this well how that's an open question i'll leave it there because the next thing i want to talk about and the thing that probably a lot of us here are really excited about is expedited updates right so one of the other problems one of the things you can do in config manager um, is i call it the big red button uh which is that within my org uh, we had our normal uh, we had we had actually my last org i should say we had a very mature uh testing process not everybody participated but their participation or lack thereof was well documented uh, and we gave people a week or two to do the testing which made our cycles really long yes i know but like we we, we to the extent we could we took testing very seriously um, and but something happens like print nightmare or you know want to cry or whatever it was and then security just comes down and says we need this install right freaking now like we were not testing we're not doing this we're not doing that we've looked at it and we're we're scared out of our pants and we need you to push this out right now that's the thing you do in config manager right that's uh you could literally just go make a deployment and you would use the, uh use the fast channel to go be like hey go 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 make these things run a sync and and cycle and sorry uh, software update about like let's go push this out you could do it in minutes uh, that's not a thing that's not a thing in windows update for business right until now that's that's what that's what this does uh, again, there's some you'll see the licensing and the addition prerequisite only supports servicing channel, but it allows you to do what I just talked about, right? You can you can pick a specific KB and you can aggressively push it out and it's only going to push out that KB with one like slight caveat um, and it's in the document. It's in the docs that I link above. I have links on the top of all these slides where I can. Um, it's like if you make the policy after it, that up, if you make a policy for an update, after that update has been superseded, it might get the latest release, which isn't the end of the world. You still get the thing that you need, which is to make sure that that machine is is uh, um, is at a specific KB. And and the idea here is like think of this like you're you're on the fly setting a baseline, right? That's what this is doing. It's saying, hey, all these machines that I deploy this to, they need to be at this particular baseline. Um, it ignores any deferrals. It ignores. Uh, um, all those the, the, the deadline stuff we said it overrides your reboot settings right it's very aggressive it is up and in your face to make sure that this happens as soon as possible so let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like um my feature update deployment that is over here it's called feature windows 10 uh feature updates uh quality updates sorry so you can give it a name and this is it right again very simple stuff from a ui perspective this is very very simple but also interesting right uh adam gross asked this question you know it's like well this isn't an update right like the verbiage here isn't an update this isn't even a kb right and it's very focused on that the idea of quality updates so like you're going to say may's release of update or sorry july's may release of update and we're going to force that right and and the service on the back end is going to say well that's across all windows 10 version right so we're going to make sure we're not talking about individual updates we're just saying oh you need to make sure right freaking now that the out of band security update that they released is, is on every windows 10 device well that's that's what you care about so that's what we're going to do and we're not going to futz with well this KB in you know 1903 gets this and 20 oh whatever gets something else like no none of that like you don't need to think about it at that level it's just straight up you're going to pick the, the the month release or the out of band release and that's where we're going to force it and again this is where it comes in like a wrecking ball um I, everything else you set doesn't matter nothing else matters all that matters is this and so if you want this to go out as soon as freaking possible that this is what you do you go in here and you do it now I will tell you that if this is a good like if you're like oh this is a good idea 
I would actually suggest you go out and do something like this. I would actually suggest you go push this out. Maybe wait a, f a few months if you want. Get to a point where one of these updates you feel good about, like, hey, it's everywhere. Because uh, what caught a lot of people off guard with this is, yeah, when you set this, there's a bunch of stuff that has to happen in the background. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. We're almost done. We're getting to the end. Um, but there's a bunch of stuff that happens in the background, and that may not be as quick as you want it, right? Like, so it can take 24 hours for the infrastructure behind, because uh, I guess I'm, that's the tell. There's infrastructure behind this to get set up. And for there's actually some, like, you need to make sure that your clients have some code on them. You don't have to do that. It happens automatically, but it's going to take time for that to happen before they can then go ahead and expedite it up. Expedite, expedite an update. And so that caught a bunch of people off guard with the out of band release. Suddenly everyone's like, oh, we need to make this happen. And they said it. And then they're like on Twitter, hey, why? It's 24 hours. Why, why is everything updated? And there's a, there's a reason for that. So you might consider waiting to the point where, hey, we're going we're gonna to expedite an old update just to get all that piping in place. And the other thing you could do is when you do that, you'll actually have, I think you'll get some reporting about, hey, like, you'll know like which updates, which devices don't have this old update. And why aren't they compliant to this policy? Kind of a, a reporting hack, if you ask me. So let's go back. I ask you though again, right? How is this working? What like, like what crazy client policy is going to make this stuff happen? Like how did they build this? And the answer is the deployment service. Like the, like when I saw feature update deploy thing and I went down that rabbit hole, the thing that Microsoft was cagey about was like, oh, we got this thing called the deployment service. I'm like, what is that? What's what's that? That sounds awesome. It's a and what is it? I don't care what they tell you. It's a web service that controls how Windows Update delivers updates to your devices, and that's a very simple sentence. But for me, as an update nerd, like that's like mind blowing stuff. Like holy crap, because that's W. You know, like that's what WSOS does. It does it poorly today. It used to do it great. I just, I, I, not, um, but the point is, Web, Windows Update is the grandfather of all cloud services, right? Before cloud was cool, Windows Update was there, right? And and the idea that I can go into anything, like the fact that I can impact what Windows Update, the cloud service, delivers to just my devices, like, whoa, that's like if you if if you can do that at all. What kinds of things can you do? Well, I can tell you what you can do. You can do feature update deployments, right? You can you can do driver deployments and you can do it at a specific date and you can do, you can expedite things, right? Because now you have this API, this web service hooked right into Windows Update. And recently they put out a graph API to do it, right? Like, like Intune, uh, Intune and some of these things are actually behind the ball here, right? The deployment service is way ahead of these front ends because if you use that graph, graph API, you can do things like schedule updates, deployments to begin on a specific date, right? So, hey, if you want to deploy 20H2 to devices on March 14, 2021, guess what? You can do that. Okay, I guess it's too late for March, but you get the idea. I, I totally copied this directly from the docs, right? So I'm not even making these up. This is copy and paste from the docs. If you want to, if you want to release stuff on a specific date, yep, use a graph API. I can do that. Do you want to stage those deployments over a period of days, a week? Do you like phase deployments in Config Manager, where you say, hey, we want to deploy to X number of devices per day over this period of time, and then we want to check, make sure it's going well? Yeah, you can do that. The deployment service supports that. None of the front ends I've seen do, but the deployment service does. Do you want to bypass pre-configured Windows Update for policies? Well, that's expedite, right? If if you want to if you want to YOLO, tell it, hey, we're going to YOLO these things. You can do it. Um, do you want to take mach machine learning? They might say AI, but to make sure that, hey, we're going to pilot this thing, but I want to make sure that this is piloted against a, a, a properly re representative set of hardware and software. You can do that with the deployment service. Again, no, no front end does that yet, but like you can, you can say, hey, we want to deploy this and we want you to, to kind of automatically pilot for us. And then do you want it to automatically fail if, if we start seeing rollbacks, right? Like, or, or there's a safeguard hold, right? Do, do you want it to say, hey, your deployment is going really bad. What if we stopped? What if we didn't do that anymore? You can do that, right? Like, and I don't know, this super excites me because like what other stuff could they do, right? There is this API, this web service that controls Windows updates, the cloud service at this crazy granular level. And, so like I asked this question that we asked at the beginning, like what's what's Windows Update for business? Like I don't even freaking know anymore. It's crazy. It's like insane. The things that you can suddenly do. 
you know, it's not, you know, is it just this client GPO settings? No, it's not just that anymore, right? Is it is it a cloud service? Yeah, suddenly. Who knew? But yeah, suddenly it is. Is it a reporting service? I mean, think back to that firmware stuff. Like we're getting this data back and then we take action on it, right? Like, holy crap. What 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 sort of data can we drive out of this this thing? It's in an API? Yeah, it is. Suddenly, Windows Update for Business has an API that you can go and do crazy things. But here's the one thing I do know it is. It's a stone cold WSS killer. I'm telling you, there are absolutely reasons you're going to have to use WSS. Don't get me wrong. It's going to live forever, um, probably outlive us all. But if anything's going to kill Config Manager, it is a cloud service connected to Windows Update that lets you do all sorts of crazy and powerful uh, deployment for your org. And that's exactly what the that's exactly what uh, the deployment service is. All right, that's done. I, again, I am super excited about the deployment service. Love to know if anybody has any questions about it. Um, yeah, I haven't heard anyone talk or yell at me, so I'm concerned nobody heard anything I said for the last 40 minutes. Brian, you were uh, muted. We uh, couldn't hear. <laughs> but I will tell you to read the chat. Oh yeah, okay. Well, there you go. There's uh, Kay has a message that uh, looks kind of interesting. What is it? Somebody read it to me. Oh, unless I can find it. About already. expedited. Uh, send your message. Send your. Uh, uh, if you're using expedited, oh. send an email off to ask. Oh hey. At Microsoft.com. Kay Toma, yeah, she's a part of the product group. Hi Kay. Oh, Hi, so Brian. apparently some of the product team is paying attention. So is Jason. <laughs> oh, well. yeah. So, did I say anything uh, wrong? Jason. What did I get wrong? I'm sure I got stuff wrong. <laughs> no, Jason's this is not doesn't hate you. I took a lot of notes, a lot of great feedback for us to take back to our product team. Thank you so much, Brian. This was a really, a really, really great overview of our different services. Thank you. Yeah, I cannot. I, I had to laugh when Aria uh, shared your uh, that that email address and was like, oh, and by the way, it's these two suckers that have to deal with it. <laughs> like, yeah. Somebody just got off the Christmas mailing list. <laughs> any other questions? Any other, I mean, hey, if, we, if, there's, if there's any feedback about like, because I get like, again, I'm super excited about the idea that the deployment service exists because like, what else can you build on this, right? Like, like I always, again, I always felt Windows Update for Business, it's like, it's this, um, it's this client side thing, and that's 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 that is like you're you're stuck with what the client lets you do, and and so sometimes the Windows product team is going to put out a new feature. That's great. That's for 21H2, but I'm still running, you know, 19. What is it? 03 or you know 1902 or uh, I I can't keep track track them all, but like I'm running this old 1903, and it's like uh, I don't have that feature, right? Well, the deployment service goes away. You put it into the cloud, and suddenly all that stuff doesn't matter. Um, yeah, I, so and, uh, Andrew says, hey, you know, don't forget that orgs don't have a band. Yeah, I would say, you know, um, uh, that would be some feedback I would give to Microsoft. Like, there's this thing called Microsoft Connected Cache. It's right now only supported as part of Config Manager, and that, that like, has to get fixed. Like, I, I don't know. It has to get released. It's a thing. It has to be done. Uh, where is the feature updates available or software center? So this is so um, this is just the built in Windows 10 stuff, right? So there is no software center. There's no I don't even, I don't even think I don't know. There's like eight different store apps and I, I haven't kept abreast, but you literally just go. Uh, let me stop presenting here. Uh, slideshow. Right, you just go to start and you go to updates and you know, that's where it's going to show like this. This is where it's because you, you're going to get, you know, whatever you're OK. I know there's some people on this call that their home machines are like in Config Manager in tune. Like I know there's those huge nerds out there. I'm I'm one of them. But like if you don't, if that's not you, like you just have a normal PC connected to the Windows update, like that's the experience, right? Like that's that's where it's going to show up. That's how it's going to look. Um, yeah. Uh, I would also say, if anyone's listening, I'd, I'd like, I would love to see this not be uh, singly specific to Windows 10. Like, uh, I think there's some gaps for Windows Update for Business, especially when we start adding this deployment service. There's like some gaps for like server management, but like we are close. 
I think there's stuff you could <laughs> exactly. I think you could you could do that. See, uh, now, you're, now you're giving me shit for saying uh, wuss versus w sus. Uh, there I are Microsoft people on here, man. What did I say? No, uh, it was me earlier, man. Oh. So I'm just scrolling through. If there's any, yeah, if there's any questions that I uh, we want to talk about, go ahead and just come off mute. That's probably the easiest way. Uh, good question, Lee. He asks, you know, how would the driver updates and Windows update compare to the ones from Dell command update? Um, yeah, so it's a good question. I mean, I can't speak a lot for Devel command update. I will speak for the what you know four years ago the HP kind of version of that was, uh, which is that neither are cutting edge, right? Like their their own HP's own feed that they push out was like at the time was like very specific for, like it was a cab right this big cab file uh that has like oh it's all the updates for th that sorry not all the drivers for a particular set of models right and they didn't up like when they up they wouldn't just update that whole cab every single moment that a new driver was right so so those cab files tended to sort of lurk behind the the latest drivers that your um oems uh but microsoft uh, you know, if you if you if you drink the Kool Aid and, and go read some of the links on on that stuff, like they are actively going after OEMs to to get on board. And OEMs do; they put lots of drivers into into um, Windows Update, and Microsoft does a somewhat bang up job of doing all the testing for you and making sure that that yeah, these actually legit work. Uh, so, I don't think either are cutting edge. Uh, if anybody has experience. With specifically Dell, uh, by all means, come off. Come off. Uh, yeah, right. I mean, right. It's like it made so like, and yet sometimes being cutting edge isn't the right thing either for drivers. So I, I don't like. I don't know what to tell you. That's 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 specifically why I love the I uh, love what I sh that that process I showed, which is like, well, you can you know you can deploy them to like small groups of devices, and you can approve them at this granular level, right? So like, you can take it part of your org and just blast them all out. Um, and do your testing, right? It's it's not, you know, back in the, if we go to straight Windows update for business, when I was showing you the Windows 10 update rings, right? It's like, well, either you just get all the drivers, or you get none of them, right? So this is why this is beautiful, uh, at least in my opinion. Any other questions I'm missing here? Yeah, I have a question. I wrote about sure. it. But, but, uh, you uh, did the uninstall for, for a ring. Mm -hmm. so how fast how fast is it if you have like thousand machines in a ring and you select uninstall how fast will yeah. the feature update be removed on the machines is it is it like in an hour or is it like in a day or a week that's a great question my so i'm, I'm going to say an assumption because i've never actually done it no, <laughs> i've never me. actually pushed it that's why i'm asking yeah uh, so my assumption is it'll happen as fast as uh, they get the the policy, right? And and it, you know, it's not going to follow your deferrals. But has anyone act anyone on here actually pulled that trigger? No, me neither. I haven't done it because if I have want to do uninstall on, say for example, if you have a like a production ring and and you see that the application for the uh, where they bring in the money, so uh, production application. Yeah, yeah, your line of business. Yeah, the the fails, and and you have to roll it back. So if you do that, will it happen within an hour or or? So if someone has done it, I would really like to know the answer to this. Because doing it in a lab will, won't do it. Because yeah, okay, it's uninstalled. Yeah, check. But I mean. Uh, I would argue if you like, I think you could totally lab this out uh, because, uh, yeah, I think you could. I, I think you could lab it out. I, I think you could do oh, one or two clients. You? And, okay, that seems. I, I think so because because okay. I, I mean, unless I don't see how do I say this outside of the deployment service where I talked about the features that aren't even in any of the front ends where you could like stage an update. Like I, I don't think that's not as far as I know. That's not how Windows Update works. 
right? It's just like, or those policies. It's, it's not going to be like, oh, we're going to do that on five clients. So if you had a thousand clients and you did it, it's going to happen in my mind as quickly as get the policy. What I what I can't answer in my mind is, well, does it apply? And you know, what is the user experience for that? Because I've never gone through it, right? Like, is the user experience you had like two days to uninstall this and then reboot? Like, like that's the part that I that I I don't know. And if anybody does. I'd love for them to to speak up, but uh, that's the part that that I can't answer because I've never actually kind of done. It. But if you did that on one or two machines, like okay, you know that hey, we got the policy now, and and this is a user experience. That's how quick it's going to happen, and I would expect that to scale scale pretty directly, pretty linearly from that. Yeah. So yeah, okay. So yeah, I I would uh, you're you're making me want to go do it. And I do have some yeah, machines that I could I could destroy. So I can help you with it. <laughs> yeah, I'm always. Uh, I really you know, like, want to try it out because, yeah, having like thousand machines roll back and, and feature update is a real challenge. I think so. so I, yeah, I, I know that they don't. Yeah, uh, I know there's some Wells Fargo big bank people on this call, and and I don't know they would answer that, but like I know that they've done it. Some of that stuff, in some cases, at scale. So, like the actual rollback, I'm told, is actually quite nice, right, Gary? Yeah. Let's see if you go. Yeah, go, going back from a feature update to a previous one is not bad at all. We do that all the time during regression testing for each model, so we can test each model several ways with different software. Cool. Okay. Cool. So, so Lee asked about reporting. So, yeah. There's a reason I didn't talk a lot about reporting because there's not a lot to talk about reporting with Windows Update for Business. Um, uh, built into Windows Update for Business is no, nothing, at least right now. The deployment service makes me all shades of interested, but there's nothing built into Windows Update for Business to do it. And so if you move from straight up uh, Windows Update for Business to this, you don't out of the box have anything. There is uh, there is some stuff. It doesn't say there aren't solutions. Um, Right, exactly. Say, so, Jake, you know, and this is this is the, so the way that this conversation usually goes when I talk to a, a Microsoft uh, project manager for this, and sorry if any of them are on the call, is, hey, we got a reporting problem. I need to, I like, especially think about expedited because this came out like, hey, we expedited a bunch of stuff. Well, yeah, maybe in 24 to 36 hours you might get data back. Well, guess what? That's not really good enough. Right, like, like I need, I need reporting, and the thing, the the hump, I can't seem to get them. Well, okay, sorry, we'll stop. I'll say, hey, I need better reporting, and they're like, well, you know, if you just care about the the update level, we do, you know, we show you what devices are at what OS level, and I'm like, yeah, but there's non OS updates that I happen to care about, you know, like .NET, I care about .NET, I, you know, I care about. Edge. There's things I care about that aren't just the OS, and they're like, "Oh, well, okay, you could do, you could do update compliance, kind of." And update compliance, I'd argue, kind of works. You know, like it's not terrible, but it's 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 really not great. And so they're like, "Well, the real answer is to go buy Defender ATP." You're like, "Well, but that's E5, right?" They're like, "Well, yeah, yeah." And so the answer again is, if you're an Intune and you want high quality. Uh, software update reporting. The answer is go buy a different a, a, another product. I don't mean a different pr pat patching product. I'm saying you're they don't have a solution for you that I think is adequate today, and you're going to need to go find it. And that's within Microsoft, right? Go buy Defender ATB, but that's not a, it's not free. Uh, go to uh, update compliance. It is free, but it's it's not great. And then but then you'll have the data because like uh, I think Doug Wilson pointed like uh, uh, com update compliance will get you that data and the data. You can get to the point where the data exists, and then you can just go build your own reports on top of it. You know, so it's it's yeah. That was me five, taking like five minutes to say, yeah, it's not a great, it's not a great story. And uh, you know, every time you see a PM, let them know that they need to fix it. Right, right. You can make it right. So like exactly, you can, you can, you can. Through through code, all things are possible, right? You can make your own custom log. Like you have you have a log space, right? And you can put whatever crazy things you want up there and build your own. Like, but that's it's just not. I mean, I think the config manager, right? Where just out of the box, all the data is there. The reports just kind of suck. Like I talked about, 
I actually talked about that earlier, right? Like people still don't be like, well, I'm going to build my own reports, right? It's like, it's just hard. Building reporting is hard. Building reporting that everyone agrees to is useful is even harder, right? Because you know, everybody has, everybody has get 10, get 10 system administrators in a room, tell them to define what update compliance is for their org and you end up with 15 definitions, right? Like, and so it is somewhat a, a somewhat Herculean task to be like, oh, we're going to write a single set of reports that everyone loves and, and uses and works for their org. But that shouldn't stop you from making it better. Yep, yep. Yeah, uh, Doug, yeah, Doug, it, it's, uh, I think uh, I talked to, uh, um, that's why we're kind of sad the, the the MVP summit hasn't been like in person because that was, uh, I know uh, Adam Gross and I were like, we're going to go find a PM. We're going to sit in an office if we at all, like if we have to die on this hill, I'm happy to die on this hill. Let's go, let's go find, let's go find an office and sit down and be like, I need you to diagram and give me a timeline for your plan to fix <laughs> this because it needs fixed. Sorry, I'll stop harping on the reporting. Although no, I no, I think we should continue harping on the report. <laughs> no, it's thing. a dead horse. It's, yeah, it's me dead. too. So I think we should have a good reporting for for <laughs> Windows update for business. So, so that's that's the reason uh, most of my customers, because I work as a consultant. So 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 they ask me when we go to Windows update for business, how do we know that they are patched? So best case is update compliance. That is yeah. what you're supposed to use. I think that is still the de facto answer from them. Yeah. Um, they're, it's supposed to have the same data that Intune shows at the same time. Yeah, it doesn't. Well, you, if it does not, if the data is mismatching, you should be opening a ticket to Microsoft. Um, we, oh yeah, because they're going to care. Please, well. You know, that's the response we get. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, OK, I, so so I will ask my customer to open a ticket to Microsoft next time. Yeah. If you can document that. Um, yeah. Feel like, I don't know, yeah. Luke Bryan so I, or Luke Gregan to get a hold of me even, or message me on Twitter and let me know. Yeah. No, yeah. thanks, Kay. Right, there you go. I, I Like, I know you guys know. Like, I know the project managers know because I've told them. <laughs> like, many of us have told them. Uh, uh, I, the, the, the only the thing I always say is it's not just OS updates. It's not just about cumulative updates. It's not just about feature updates. You know, it's about every update. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, okay, I hundred percent want to be in on that. <laughs> yeah, was that you, Doug? Um, let me. Yeah. Yeah, if you could message oh, me, or if I could get your contact info, let's let's definitely sync. So yeah. Anyone else? Any other questions? Again, uh, we have now. I'm counting two, at least two PMs here. All quiet. Yeah. All right. Well, let me hit share my screen. Uh, thank you, Brian. This was very wonderful. And thank That's you, uh, Microsoft uh, team, for joining as well. Really appreciate you guys here and listening in. And, and, and you're more than welcome, right? We're Northwest System Center user group uh, combined with a couple others. But we, we would typically meet in Bellevue if you guys are located uh, here in Redmond, Bellevue area. But we're just online right now uh, due to the world. But um, our next meeting will be in September. If, if anybody from product group wants to present or get a feedback session, we would welcome that uh, in, in September. And uh, with that, we're going to do two more apples. Uh, the first one here, uh, you can see it on the screen. I'd love uh, for everybody to just chime in with a uh, number for which of these you think is the uh, best Brian onesie. There's a couple here that are real. Uh, there's a couple I didn't put numbers on just because I pasted them in there, so I didn't like. Uh, I didn't want to win the raffle here. Because you can only uh, count so high. I can only count so high too. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, if you've got a, uh, a vote there, throw that in and I will do my best to see which number we think is uh, the most popular and we're going to very cheesily go with it that way. 
let's see, three, two, seven, two, three, seven, one, two, four, four, two. Well, it sounds like a two or a three right now. I see some threes, fours. I don't know. What do you guys think, think here? Just so you know, my oldest son is looking at the screen and wondering. <laughs> Why? What, what Why? is this? Dad, awesome. this is your job. What in the world? <laughs> That's right. Well, numbers are all over the place. I, I don't know, Brian. Tell me what. Tell me what you think. You can't vote twice. I'm sure a lot have, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I see threes and I'm fours with, and twos and sevens. Okay, I'm. I got to go with four uh, because of the the just the level of effort. Yeah. Yeah. Jake. Jake. All right. He just, yeah, he totally deserved it for that one. All right. Congratulations, Jake. Jake, send me an email. Um, somewhere I've got it here, greg at nwscug.org. And uh, we'll send you an Amazon gift card. All right. That really how this was working? I missed that part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll go bigger next time. Yep. Uh, okay. Uh, in our last raffle here, go to swagadiet. IO and we'll do another $25 Amazon gift card. Let's see here. I tried to paste it in, but it got weird on me. Let's see. We'll see if that gets to you or not. Any closing comments? requests oh you know what i did have a survey let me throw that in here real quick um if uh you guys have a couple more minutes please go fill out our survey half the questions are just for anybody that's local just talking about getting back together in person and a happy hour i asked at last meeting we only got a couple of responses so i thought we'd kick it down the road a little bit further and see if we uh see if we get anything else and um, let's see here. While we finish up, I've got one more web page to bring up. Let me find it. If you're not familiar with our web page, nwscug.org, let me bring that up. So we do have a YouTube link here. So uh, we'll be posting sessions next week as long as everybody, as long as all our presenters are good with um, uh, us just posting the recording. So we'll do that here. We also have our sponsor link. Uh, we welcome if anybody else is interested in sponsoring. Uh, big thanks to Patch My PC and Recast again. And let's see, anything else? Well, I'll post as well on the front page here. I'll post a link to any slides or anything else that the presenters want to share. Let me hit start draw. We'll let this roll for just a second or two. Any more closing comments, questions, concerns, wishes? All right. Congratulations, Andrew Porter. Grab a screenshot of what you see on your screen and send it to me, greg at nwscub.org. Um, I do think for those of you local, we're going to try to do something in August, just a happy hour, probably somewhere in Bellevue or something like that. And then we'll meet again in September. Based on you know feedback, we'll see if we're ready to to try to have a hybrid meeting or if we'll stay online. Either way, we'll, be, we'll, we'll have it online as well. Um, and I'll ask one more time. Any more closing comments? Otherwise, we'll let you guys get to your own happy hours, and uh, we'll talk to you in a month or two. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thank Good to see you all. Thanks, Good to talk, yeah. and uh, appreciate all your time. Yeah. All righty. Mm -hmm. Bye.